Hi, I'm Karen. And I'm Nancy. And you're listening to our latest Kids Momo Mo, where we give you Mo Kids Momo. This time we're reviewing the new movie, The Lorax, based, of course, on the classic book by Dr. Seuss. Welcome to Sneedville, a city, they say, that was plastic and fake. And they liked it that way. No nature, no flowers, no one seemed to mind. But a secret was waiting for someone to find. Hi, Ted. Do you want to see something cool? Whoa. What are those? Trees. They used to grow all around here. (laughs) What I want more than anything is to see a real living tree. Okay. So, you want to know what happened to the trees? Well, I didn't think anyone still cared. Well, that's me, the guy who still cares. It all started a long time ago when I accidentally summoned a mystical creature as old as time itself, the Lorax. Hey, did you chop down this tree? (gasps) What's that? So you've probably seen a gazillion commercials for this movie by now, but just in case, the movie is about a boy named Ted who has a major crush on a girl named Audrey, and the number one thing Audrey wants in life is to see a real tree because they live in a town where everything is completely artificial and the water has chemicals in it and people buy fresh bubbled air and it's just terrible. So Ted goes to see a guy named the Onceler who tells Ted the story of how he destroyed all the trees when he was younger, putting his own greed above the needs of the environment and the native animals. And a creature called the Lorax tried to stop the Onceler, but the Onceler just would not listen, leading to the kind of world that Ted and Audrey live in. And that's the basic premise. But there's also this other stuff that happens with Ted where he has to fight against the evil Mr. O'Hare who basically runs the town and wants to stop new trees from growing. I actually felt like it was two movies in one. Yeah, I kind of thought that the extra stuff was unnecessary, actually. Like, all that stuff with Mr. O'Hare and all the stuff with Ted and Audrey in their town is actually not in the original book. And basically it has, like, the same message as the main story about the Wunsler and the Lorax. So I think they could have just kept it closer to the original story and not added all of that. Well, I guess they just had to make it longer, and it was also more modern that way, instead of the story being just about something that happened in the past. That's true. And there were definitely lots of great things about the new stuff. Like, for example, I really love the fact that the movie opened with a huge song and dance Mm -hmm. number, just like an old-fashioned musical. Yeah, I really loved all the musical numbers. Oh, and also from the new story in the movie, I thought one of the funniest parts of the whole film involved Audrey and Ted and kissing. Kiss you right now. We don't have time for that. I don't know. We have a little time. Are you sure you didn't just like that part because you love Zac Efron, (laughs) who does Ted's voice? No, excuse me. Give me some credit. Yes, I do love Zac Efron. Sure, I love him more than all the girls in America love Big Time Rush and One Direction combined. Maybe I do love him with the depths of the deepest ocean and the force of a thousand wind gusts and the heat of a billion burning suns. Whoa, 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 whoa. We get it. Okay. All I'm saying is that yes. I have a teeny tiny little crush on Zac Efron. Mm -hmm. But it was also just a really funny moment in the movie, objectively speaking. I heard other people laughing, too. All right, I'll admit I laughed at that part, too. But I also like Zac Efron, so. (laughs) Who doesn't? Anyway, the funniest part of the movie, for me at least, was when the marshmallows were flying all over the air and the forest (laughs) animals were looking up in awe and leaping around to eat them. And even though I've already seen that part in the trailers, I just thought it was hilarious in the actual movie. (laughs) Yes, I agree. That was one of my favorite parts, too, especially because you know I have a sweet tooth. (laughs) Right. Actually, I probably would be like that, too, if I saw food falling from the heavens. Remember that time that we were at our friend Brent's wedding and we walked into a room with four buffet tables and it was, like, so unexpected because there was also a sit-down dinner later? And one of the tables had sushi on it and it's, like, my favorite food in the world. And I just remember looking around in disbelief and it was like, ah. Yes, I definitely remember that. And like, I think I took a picture of you. It was the perfect moment. And I was like, this is the face of pure joy. <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting hungry. Focus, Karen. Focus. Okay, we have okay. To review the Lorax. Right. Back to the movie. So basically, I loved every scene in the movie that involved animals. The bears were all adorable and the singing fish were awesome. Mm-hmm. And did you see that part where all the animals ate so much of the Wensler's pancakes that a bear had to roll a fish outside afterwards? It was like this fat, fat oh, fish. No, I'd missed that. Oh, it was hilarious. You know, there's probably so much to look at in this movie. I bet we could watch it again and notice all sorts of cool things that we didn't even see the first time around. Yeah, I thought the visuals were great, even though we didn't even see it in 3D. Yeah. The truffula trees look so soft, and so did the Lorax. I, like, want to buy myself a stuffed Lorax now so I can hug and pet him. Somehow I don't think he would approve of that. No, probably not. Probably be really grumpy about it. (laughs) So was there anything you didn't like about the movie? Not really. I'm definitely going to give it a... Wait, wait! 
Before you say how you'd rate the Lorax, you need to recite your poem. All right. So Karen and I decided to sum up our thoughts on the movie in verse form in honor of Dr. Seuss. So here we go. The Lorax sprung from a tree, and I think Karen would agree. The movie will make you laugh. If you don't like it, you're deaf. It was really very fun. I was sad when it was done, but not that sad, you see, because I really, really had to pee. <laughs> and I'm giving the movie a smiley face. <laughs> So it was your poem. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my poetic review. I used a different rhyme scheme than you. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That was a rhyme right there. I'm so awesome. Okay. okay, here we go. I liked this film. It was lots of fun. The visuals were cool, and I laughed a ton. And there's a message, one I can back. We should care for the earth and be just like Zach. I mean, Ted. <laughs> you really can't stop thinking of Zac Efron, can you? <laughs> nope, and I don't want to. But anyway, I'm giving the movie a smiley face just like you. Great, so that's two smiley faces for the Lorax based on the book by Dr. Seuss. Yep, so go out there and read the book, watch the movie, and plant a tree. Or, you know, do something else awesome for the planet, like switching to reusable bags for your lunch or using energy-conserving light bulbs. As they say in the Lorax, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So thanks for listening and tune in next time.